OK, here's our question. We've got a car driving around a banked corner and not skidding. First part asks us to draw a free body diagram for the situation. OK, so let's get the question out of the way. So we have a banked corner and we have a car. What forces are acting on the car? Well, there's going to be gravity downwards. There's going to be friction. Now, we don't know which way the friction's going. It could be going uphill or downhill. If the car was just driving really slowly, then it would try to slide downhill so the friction force would push up. If it's going really fast, it would be trying to fly off the edge and the friction would be pushing it downwards. We don't know. Um, I guess I'll put it downwards arbitrarily. It will come out as a minus sign if I chose that wrong. And then we have a normal force. So that's our free body diagram. Now, we need to work out the normal force. So what do we know? Well, um, as it's going in a circle, there must be a net acceleration towards the center of mv squared over r. As it's neither flying up into the air or sinking into the ground, there must be vertical balance. So vertical um, get some angles in here. This angle here is theta, which means that angle there is theta. So vertically, we have that n cos theta. And that angle there must be theta as well. Is upwards and the downward force is F sine theta and mg. So that's vertical. Horizontally the net force must equal mv squared over r. So horizontal we have m v squared over r equals f cos theta plus n sine theta. What do we want? We want n. How are we going to get it? Hmm, well, let's think. Maybe the easiest way. If you want n, we've got to eliminate f. So if you rearrange this equation to make f the subject and then substitute it into there, we'll have got rid of f and we can then rearrange this to make n the subject. So let's rearrange the top one. So we have f equals n cos theta minus mg over sine theta. Substitute that in here. We have that m v squared over r equals n cos squared cos squared theta minus m g cos theta all over sine theta. Plus n sine theta. Let's rearrange this um, fairly messy looking equation to um, let's get rid of the fractions first. So let's multiply by sine theta and let's take all the terms with n over to the left. So we have n cos squared theta plus n sine squared theta equals m v squared over r sine theta minus m g cos theta. 
Now that's very nice because the cos squared plus sine squared is 1. So that's just n is equal to that, and we have our answer. Is this correct? Uh, the question asks us to work out if it's correct by considering the limiting cases when theta is 0 and 90 degrees. So when theta equals 0, um, everything is horizontal. That term is gone, so it's just n is mg cos theta. Um, opposite direction, which makes sense. That's uh, cos theta is 1, so n is mg. When theta is 90 degrees, n is mv squared over r, centrifugal force. So again, that all makes sense. The only thing that worries me a bit is why, why there's a minus in front of the mg. Have I got that right? I drew n as upwards and weight as downwards, so that should be a plus sign. i better check that. And indeed, if I check it, I find that that should indeed be a plus over there. Um, because it's on the opposite side from the n. The n's positive on this side. That's negative, so when you move it over there, it'll have a plus sign. So it behaves right. Now we have fixed the bug. The next part of the question is to determine the frictional force exerted on the road by the tyres. Now we already did that. The frictional force we worked out on the previous page was just F equals N cos theta minus mg over sine theta. That's the first thing we worked out. Is that plausible? Um, well, at least the units, that's a force. That's a force. That's a force. So that makes sense. Not so sure about the functional form, but that seems to make sense. The final part of the question asks us to work out the minimum coefficient of static friction. Now, we know it's static friction because the wheels are not slipping. If they were skidding, then it would be dynamic friction. And we know that the coefficient of friction is given by the equation, the friction force is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So um, that's the maximum friction force you can get. Once you get more than that, it starts to slide. So the limiting case is when they're actually equal. That's when you're just on the edge of slipping. So in this case, mu is going to be F over N. And we've got the equations for F and N. If we substitute them in, it comes to cos theta over sine theta minus mg over n sine theta. It's just for our equation for the friction force. And if we substitute in our rather long equation for n and simplify, that all comes out as 1 over tan theta plus gr over gr cos theta sine theta minus v squared sine squared theta. And that should be a plus sign uh, to be consistent with the correction we made earlier. Um, is this plausible? It's pretty messy. Um, it's hard to work out the functional form, but we can check dimensions. We've got gr at the top gr over here and v squared. Now, do v squared and gr have the same units? g is meters over second squared, r is meters, so that's meters squared over second squared, and so is v squared. So yes, dimensions check. Um, it's rather hard to check the functional form of that because it's pretty messy, um, but as far as we can easily check, it looks okay.